Hello and welcome to course of digital image processing using Python. I am Ahmed and we will be discussing histogram equalization. Okay, we have already discussed little about histogram. I mean, what information it portrays and how we can compute histogram using Python programming. Uh, most common issue is of colored images. Even some gray level images are saved as RGB, I mean three channel images. Um, so simple solution could be to convert it into a grayscale image and then compute histogram, visualization, uh, histogram uh, like one we have plotted over here. Because most of the time we are interested in objects, not colors. Uh, however, we do need color image processing. In case of color image processing, we can compute histogram of each color channel. I mean um, histogram of the uh, red channel. This is the red channel and our red uh, component. And similarly, histogram of the green component and similarly histogram of the uh, blue component. So you can observe that the blue channel is almost uh, filled with zeros. Uh, are close to zero values because there is no blue component in the colored image. However, red and green uh, channels have good count of higher values like uh, especially in case of red component because there is a plenty of red color in original colored image. So in either way we can either Either we can convert the original colored image to a grayscale image and then we could, can plot its histogram. The other way is to plot histograms of the each channel. Okay, uh, Both types of histograms provide useful information uh, about lightning, contrast, dynamic range and saturation effects. But this RGB histogram is not about actual colors because colors are generated using um, R, G and B component together at hardware level. Let us consider an 8-bit image um, where 8 bits are used to represent each channel. I mean 8 bits for red channel and then 8 bits for green channel and similarly 8 bits for blue channel. Then Overall, one color is generated using 24 bits. It's like 2 to the power 24 colors. That that would be the possible colors. Uh, it's like 16 million colors. So it's not a good practice to compute or display histogram of 16 million colors. But there is a solution to this ambiguity, and that's a combined histogram, combined color histogram. And we have one complete chapter about colored image processing. We will discuss. Uh, we will discuss later on. Cumulative distribution. So, cumulative distribution is a solution to almost our problems related to contrast. Uh, previously, we discussed um, a piecewise linear transformation to stretch the contrast, uh, but cumulative distribution of an image will be used as transformation and it is more automated and better way to stretch the contrast and it's called histogram equalization. So we know that histogram is the counting of all grayscales in an image and is represented by a vector of array of length say 256 uh, if each pixel is represented by 8 bit binary values. So cumulative distribution as the name suggests is the accumulation of histogram and we can represent it using this mathematical formula. Uh, so in this mathematical expression this h of j is the histogram and this capital H of i is the cumulative distribution function and we can see that for any ith value or ith uh, grayscale uh, in cumulative distribution, it is the sum of all the values in histogram uh, from 0 to i. Uh, say for instance, if we have a grayscale 100 over here or uh, somewhere over here 100, 
and then in CDF this value is calculated using by summing all the values of grayscales from 0 to 100 and similarly so it's like accumulation or integration so this is the image that's the histogram and that's the cumulative distribution function so cumulative as the name suggests it's a cumulation of all the values at some certain value so how we compute histogram simply it is the counting of uh, each gray level in an image uh, we have taken 8 pixels by 7 pixel image uh, uh, like this one and each pixel is represented as a 4 bit binary number uh, so we can have values between 0 and 15 uh, values saved in 2d array along with uh, row numbers and column numbers in green color so these are the row numbers and these are the column numbers or in other words in programming language these are the indices of this 2d array um, index along y axis and index along x axis so same image is displayed as a grayscale image are in gray colors uh, for histogram we need one d array of length say 16 because we have total values from 0 to 15 so we have to count the gray colors so we need mm, a 1D array of length 16. So the value at each index is in fact the sum of our count of that gray level. Like uh, we have three zeros in this array or in this image, which are in fact purely black colors, uh, like zero over here and a zero over here and a zero over here. And similarly, we have four ones, we have two twos, two threes, four fours and so on up to 15. We have eight fifteens like uh, one over here, one over here, one over here and so on. So simply histogram is the count of each gray color which is then displayed as bar graph or a stem graph. But remember this is just an example and just for intuition we have uh, selected an image are an example with 4 bit colors whereas in case of uh, standard images we use 8 bit images or 8 bit colors to present uh, gray scales and uh, there would be like 256 possible gray levels uh, as we discussed in python code for computation of histogram now look at the second array uh, hfi capital hfi which is a cumulative distribution uh, we have same value 3 at index 0 uh, but we have 7 at index 1 as compared to 4 in histogram because uh, in cumulative we have sum of all the values all the values 1 and less than 1 so it's like 3 plus 4 is 7 and similarly at 2 we have all the values uh, of gray levels equal to 2 and less than 2 so like 3 plus 4 plus 2 is 9 and similarly plus 2 is 11 and plus 4 is 15 and so on up to 8 we get 56 which is the total number of pixels or total number of values in this 2d array because the image is a 7 by 8 pixels image So let's see how we can use this cumulative distribution as as a transformation or a lookup table uh, to con enhance the contrast of an image within the next two or three slides. Uh, here are the four histograms of seed images as discussed earlier. Let us discuss them uh, one by one. Uh, histogram on top left corner, this one is marked as one and is of a dark image darker image and its cumulative distribution is displayed in image uh, shown on the left side and is marked as one also so if we use this cumulative distribution as a transformation then this transformation will stretch this range of colors or 
this range of colors to the entire range so where the histogram is in fact distributed and let's take this example histogram on the right bottom it's the it's the histogram of the grayish image and its cumulative distribution is displayed in image on the left side and is marked as 3 like this one so if we use this cumulative distribution as transformation then we will stretch the same range of gray levels same range where the histogram is distributed and we will transform this range to the entire range now compare this with contrast stretching so we transform this grayish image on the right top location uh, using piecewise linear transformation and we got this contrast stretched image but there are two issues with this approach uh, sorry number one contrast is not perfectly stretched uh, especially in this image and secondly the procedure to design the transformation is not perfectly autonomous uh, either we have to design by inspection uh, we have to observe that what is the range where the histogram is distributed then we have to design the histogram uh, sorry the transformation a straight line uh, whereas cumulative distribution is perfectly autonomous uh, and why we need an autonomous transformation because it is not possible to inspect each image taken from say live camera like cctv so we know that cumulative distribution is uh, just like a 1d array or a lookup table and we can use that lookup table as a transformation as we discussed in our last lecture and uh, we can read the intensity level from input image and then we could transform our using lookup table and then save the uh, transformed intensity level to the new image so we calculated cumulative distribution earlier and is displayed in yellow color this is the same cumulative distribution um, for a for a seven by eight or eight by seven image uh, whereas uh, the gray colors are displayed in white color these are the indices are gray colors like zero is a gray color and its occurrence is three and one is a gray color and seven is in fact sum of these two gray colors zero and one and nine is the sum of uh, these three gray colors so this is the cumulative distribution uh, we have to remap this cumulative uh, pixel count to gray scales which can have max value 15 in our case like there must be 15 over here because we would like to use uh, this cumulative distribution as a lookup table so in a lookup table we have uh, to transform an intensity to an intensity so there are two steps we can do that uh, divide the cumulative histogram with total count of pixel of any dimension that is uh, mn or m into n in our case it is uh, 8 by 7 or 56 so by dividing this whole array every each value of this array with 56 we will get a normalized array with max value 1 over here and second step is to multiply each value uh, of this normalized array with max grayscale k minus 1 in our case it is 16 so if we multiply a normalized array with 60, 15 we will get this array it is then in fact rounded to nearest integer uh, because images are uh, pixel in images are represented using integers but in case of standard images this 
highest value k minus one would be uh, two fifty five because mostly the standard images are like eight bit images. Now this array, which is the transformation, and can be used as a lookup table. So we can transform, say, we can replace zero with one, uh, one with two, and similarly, as uh, seven with six. So mostly they are mapping to the same value because uh, originally the image is high contrast, so it's not changing very much. Like fourteen is mapping to thirteen, and so on. So this array can be used as a lookup table. Uh, here is the code uh, code to implement histomicalization. Though uh, you can use OpenCV's built-in function like cv2 dot equalize hist, uh, but it is great to get an insight of this process. Uh, the function with name transformation, this one, is the same as discussed earlier for lookup table. Uh, whereas uh, im hist eq uh, is an extension of im hist, which we discussed earlier to compute histogram. Uh, in the first line, very first line uh, after the definition of our type, um, I mean line number 19, uh, we read the dimension of the image, uh, width and height or number of pixel in width and number of pixel in height. Uh, next we uh, declared uh, two 1D arrays, numpy 1D arrays of the same size 256 and 256. Uh, just to save uh, the count or values of histogram and CDF. Uh, then we initialized a variable pixum to zero to accumulate values. Then there is a for loop iterating over each grayscale from zero to 255. And we equate image uh, with the gray level i to get a binary image with ones at locations where the gray level color is i and zero otherwise. So this expression will return a binary array of the same size, uh, of the same size of the image. And then we are applying sum along uh, columns and then sum along rows to get the total count of that gray level. And we are saving that gray level to ith location of the hist array uh, then in the next line line 25 of the code we accumulate values uh, pick sum plus equal to hist of i to calculate the cumulative distribution value and then we save that value into cumulative distribution transformation on line 27 histogram is normalized with the total number of pixels to get the highest value equal to 1 and then on the next 28th line uh, is the implementation of same expression we discussed um, on the previous slide. Uh, in fact, uh, CDF is first normalized and then multiplied with 255 to convert it into a lookup table or transformation. On line 28 we have type casted or changed the type of, uh, it's like uh, rounding the values are converting these floating point values to u intate format because most of the standard images are saved as uh, u int 8 type and then we are returning hist and cdf uh, to transformations histogram and cdf then we called first i am hist equalized i am hist eq function uh, to generate histogram and CDF from the raw image and then we applied transformation on the raw image the CDF as a transformation and we got the high contrast image then there is some plotting so input image is uh, displayed on bottom left side of the image this one uh, which is uh, washed out a very bright image uh, and which is clearly depicted in histogram as the spikes are near uh, 255 which are which are the um, brighter colors 
and here is a cdf of this histogram which is in fact a cumulative version of the same histogram uh, and this bright image is transformed using cdf as transformation this image is transformed using this transformation or this cdf as transformation and we got this high contrast image in fact this range of colors are mapped to the entire range of 0 to 255 using this transformation. And this is the dark image as input this time. And then same steps, first calculate the histogram, then CDF. And look, we are going to transform this darker image using this CDF as transformation. So this range of darker grayscales will be remapped to the entire range 0 to 255 and we got this same high contrast image uh, here we go a cross crossword where we have to stay for a while i mean we would like to compare this histogram equalization process with uh, the previously discussed piecewise linear contrast fetching. So, a grayish image as input with low contrast, narrow histogram, uh, centered in the middle, mentioning presence of gray scales and gray colors. And then CDF of the same histogram is plotted right above this histogram. You can see we will use this CDF as transformation. So we will be transforming this image uh, as input and we will get this image as output because this range of this narrow range of grayish gray scales will be remapped to the entire range 0 to 255. Just using this CDF transformation as a lookup table. Now let us compare this high contrast image with the contrast stretched image using which which is in fact produced using uh, piecewise linear transformation. So look at the difference these two images the difference between these two images. This is histogram equalized image whereas this image is contrast stretched image using piecewise linear transformation. So though minor but clearly observable and this histogram equalization design uh, transformations uh, from the image hence it is autonomous so the output the the contrast of the produced image is very much improved better than this one and at the same time we have some autonomous way we, we generated this transformation using this input image. So there is no inspection required or no extra calculations required mm, to generate or to design this transformation. That is why histogram equalization is autonomous and have better results. This is a high contrast image and after histogram equalization there is no significant improvement. So any blind equalization of images from video stream like uh, uh, say a CCTV camera will not affect image images very much. High contrast is important for detection of objects with sharp boundaries. Um, a bigger chunk of uh, machine learning is dependent on object detection. We will build upon this concept and develop algorithms to detect boundaries and edges of objects. So this concept is autonomous and uh, this helps in uh, improving the contrast of any image, say a dark image or white image or a grayish image or even the image if the image is um, already a high contrast image then this equalization will not affect very much. Here is another example of histogram equalization, but not a good one. This is the original image. This is the original histogram. 
and that's the cumulative distribution and after histogram equalization we used uh, this cumulative distribution as um, a transformation on this image we got this image and this is the histogram of the new image equalized image this is the cumulative distribution of the equalized image so uh, originally image is not a low contrast image the original image and equalization and equalization transformed it into a little darker image uh, to be pre precise very narrow histogram or a multi model like this one it's a multi model there is a lobe over here and then there is a separate lobe over here so it's a high contrast image but with multi model histogram these are the two registered well known registered cases where histogram equalization usually does not work or may produce some uh, different results as required so we will stop this lecture over here and uh, in next lecture we will be discussing histogram specification and matching and some local histogram equalization or adaptive equalization so i think this is a half hour lecture so it's sufficient for this video uh, goodbye